right. Three, two, one, go. Sure. Guacamole. So this game is a sort of action platformer Metroidvania. So I am going to be running around the map trying to get new special moves, which will let me get into new areas to get more special moves to get to more areas to get to the final boss. Um, but before we go too much into the game, I need to talk about a glitch because we're going to break the game open in the first minute. Um, this game is split up into different areas, but the main menu is also treated as an area of the game. And what we're going to do is overwrite what area that is. So I'm going to open up the map while going through a door, have the main menu open over the game, and start a new game. And that's already let me skip a ton of dialogue. But it also means whenever I start and quit, I'm going to walk back to Pueblucho, back to that starting town. Um, that quite a bit. That's called um, a select door glitch or an SDG. In case I forget to explain when I'm doing another one. Um, I should probably also start with one with a seizure warning. Whenever I get a new power-up, uh, it's lots of flashing images. So, uh, yeah. Don't die. But yeah, so I'm... Uh, just doing tutorial stuff. The plot of the game is there is a big baddie skeleton. He stole my love interest. I need to beat him up. But also, I just got killed. And again, I'm going to start and quit just to skip a cutscene. It doesn't do any more than that, but it's pretty neat. So I've just got a luchador mask, which is going to unlock all of my combat. So I can roll, I can dodge, I can punch, and kick, whatever. Um, and now I get uh, another tutorial on beating things up. Um, I've also got a uh, fun little graphical glitch where I'm swapping between luchador and not luchador whenever I like swapping moves. That will go away, which is a shame. But, yeah. This guy's a troll. Yeah, right, so I'm going to be roll jumping everywhere. Rolling is slightly faster than walking, jumping preserves that speed. So, um, yeah, fastest way to move. Um, I'm also going to switch costumes here. The costumes in this game are not cosmetic. I mean, they are, but they're not just cosmetic. So, the Alabrihe costume I'm using um, means I deal double damage to everything, but also everything deals double damage to me. So, if I'm taking damage, apart from one, maybe two damage boosts, it means I'm bad and you should call me bad. But also, hopefully it's not a big deal. Most enemies in the game can one, two, or three damage because of this costume, and I'm never going to increase my health. That one damage is not going to be It's fine. There's not a lot to talk about in this first forest. Uh, it's teaching us all the platforming. It's going to teach us arenas, and I'm going to get the first power-up, but we'll come to that. Right. Uh, every now and again, the game locks you in a room and you kill everything. That is stuff. Uh, not great for a speedrun. So as soon as we've got more movement abilities, we're going to do everything we can to not go to arenas, to skip the triggers. Jumping is hard, by the way. But seriously, those three vines, that uh, like, I cannot dodge through them consistently. Right, so I'm going to set up another SDG here. There we go. 
Okay. We'll make sure my mouse is off the game. So now, whenever I start to quit, I'm going to end up somewhere in this forest. Um, I'll use that for a bit of the run before I reset it somewhere else. But also, I have to be careful with my inputs here because I'm also controlling the menu. So if I'm pressing A, then I'll tell the game to continue. It will put me somewhere I don't understand, and with the selector glitch, uh, run is dead. Also, um, don't look at the screen, by the way. Right, so that's put me right back at the start of the forest. I don't want to be there. I want to be at the end. But where you walk within the area depends on where you last loaded. So by going into there, starting and quitting, it puts me at the end. Um, yeah, when people were rooting this game, they did a lot of matching up indices and working out which places to walk to where. It's probably pretty complicated, but all the, all the hard stuff has been done. I just have to do it. I probably missed that jump. That's fine. Um, I just picked up a stamina chunk. So the yellow squares underneath my health in the top right, that's my stamina. I'll go the long way. That's a surprisingly uh, tight jump. Um, we do want to get another stamina block in the run. So I'll go out of my way a little bit just to get a few stamina chunks. This feels like a tutorial I shouldn't have to do. But um, if I don't do it, then a giant chicken stops me leaving town. So, you know, standard stuff. In theory, I come back here whenever I get into a special move and they teach me more combos, but this is the only time we actually have to be in there. So we're on our way to the first um, actual temple of the run. There are three, four, depending on how you count, temples in the game. This is the only one we actually do properly. Everything else we either completely skip or pretty much completely skip. So, um, yeah, we just don't have enough movement ability yet to... Uh, to skip things. Also, that guy's an Olmec head. It's the game's fast travel system, which we do use, but we also use the uh, selector glitch. Right, so we're going into the Temple of Rain. Um, this is where it sort of teaches us about the world of the living and the world of the dead. Um, you're probably used to games having like, light worlds and dark worlds. This is this game's version of this. Um, later on in the run, we'll be able to swap between them whenever we like. But at the moment, we just have to go through these portals. Um, and this temple introduces us to like enemies that can only be damaged in one world or the other, or platforms that are only there in one world or the other. Stuff like that. It's nothing complicated, but it's, you know, it's nice. Also, this person is called Shitabe. She is a boss later in the run. <laughs> At the moment, she talks too much. That, that's her role. Oh dear. There we go. Now the rest of these all spawn in the same place. So, you know. I haven't talked about money yet. Um, I'm getting money when I do combos, or um, there are some chests that I've been picking up. Um, we don't buy a lot in this run, we buy three things. So I never really go out of my way to get money. But I mean, yeah, we do use it. Oh dear. to recharge my stamina. So we're on our way to get um, the second power up in the game, which is uh, a headbutt. It's not that exciting. It's, I mean, it's the best damaging move we have, but it doesn't really open up any movement options. The other chests are full of skeletons, so we don't like that. 
this guy can one hit kill us. Um, if we let him touch the floor, which we don't. And this is a good example of enemies in one world or the other. I'm trying to group them up together. I didn't quite get all three of them. I have also haven't talked about the fact I'm playing in French. Um, I'm playing in French. It's faster. That's the end of that. Yeah. There are a handful fewer dialogue boxes. It saves maybe five seconds, something like that. Seizure time, look away. It's not that bad. There we go. So I can break yellow blocks and I can headbutt things. Good. Uh, I am going to buy my third stamina chunk. <laughs> Right, so we're not getting any more stamina chunks now. That's it. Three special attacks until we run out. That's good enough for all but one section of the run, which is fine. Like, we take two or three seconds to stand still. That that guy is what my costume is based on. That's the allegory, hey? He'll come back. I also haven't talked about dodge cancelling. Um, all of the special moves I can cancel by by dodging. So when I'm trying to jump fast, I will be doing that. Take this guy over to us. Um, that arena was supposed to teach us that we can't dodge fire attacks um, if the armadillos. Uh, charge up and roll at us. We can't like roll through it. We have to just flat out dodge out the way. Um, that's not a big deal until one of the boss fights where... oh, seizure. Um, where two of his attacks are fire attacks. They don't have much warning and you just die. But that's quite a bit later. Um, oh, I didn't say what that was. I just picked up the wall jump, the goat jump, because goats. Um, it's not exciting, but it opens up a lot more movement. So now we're ready to head up to the top of the temple and fight a boss. There's not too much to talk about this section. Just Bit of platforming, bit of dodging. We'll have a fairly cool arena coming up. Um, this next room I'll do a, a tiny skip, if I get it right. There we go. Just by wrapping around on the inside of those pillars I can skip a little bit of platforming. That was almost too low. talking. It is quite satisfying to beat her up, although she is a full character. Oh dear. We never want to let those um, yellow skeletons get away because they're... they dodge. Um, the, the game is spawning in pinatas at the end of fights, you might just about see. They're full of coins, we don't need any of them. Oh god, that's wrong. This, this guy can one-hit kill us, so I'm being a bit careful. Final boss. Oh, not not final boss. Boss of a temple. Yeah, really underestimate. Um, it's actually a really disappointing first boss of the game because we don't fight it, we just have to run away. It's too big and scary. It's 
so uh, this is the one auto scroller of the run. I'm sorry. So I'd like to point out that this game is not a meme. Anybody who says it is, is wrong. Yeah, so that's the Temple of Rain done. Um, again, this is the only temple we will do properly. Um, the goal now is we want to do a, a small sequence break. So we want to go and fight Shitabe a little bit early. She's going to give us Dimension Swap. Um, which we like. So to do that, we need to get out of this temple in the world of the dead, which we can't normally do, and we need to get another ability called Rock Slam. Uh, so I'm going to do the world of the dead thing first. I'm going to fast travel out. Oh. I'm going to drop an input and then fast travel back in. So again, I talked about... Um, SDGs depending on the last way you loaded. By using the fast travel system, it's going to warp us to an Olmec head when we do this. So I can uh, just walk straight back. So that's step one. We're not supposed to be here in the world of the dead yet. It's not a huge sequence break, but, you know, we're not supposed to be able to do this yet. I'm going to set up another SDG here. If I can do it properly. There we go. And again, I'm not supposed to have this menu open over the game, let alone for this long. This guy is called Flameface. He has quite a cool temple that we don't go to. He has quite a bad boss fight that we don't do. And we will actually never see him again. So, you know, enjoy this. At the moment, he's not aware that he's carrying loads of bullets on him. And he's giving us $15 and telling us there is nothing interesting in the desert. So, you know. So now I'm picking up Frog Slam, which is what I'm supposed to be doing now, just not in the world of the desert. Start and quit. Uh, properly, there we go. Okay. So because there's nothing interesting in the desert, he wouldn't lie to us. We're gonna go to Preblucho again. This is... We're now on the way to fight Shitabe, and she's quite an interesting boss fight in that you can't just wail on her. If she is hit and then, like, lands on the floor, she will teleport somewhere else. Um, if she takes too much damage too quickly, she will teleport somewhere else. So we need to sort of juggle her slowly, but not too slowly. Which uh, I'm not great at, so let's see. So first phase, she's just going to sort of float in the air somewhere. Ah, gotcha. There we go, phase one done. That was pretty good. She's got like four phases, depending on how you count. She's also a troll. Okay. 
Those guys have hitboxes before they actually... Oh, God. That's cheating. There we go. That was actually a really good boss fight. Okay, so now I've beaten her up. She likes me. She's going to give me to mention swap. She's also going to talk about the bad guy, but we don't care. We're going to skip that. And now I can just go back to Santa Lucita. Now we're actually going to go to the desert. So it's not a sequence break in that we've really skipped anything, we're just doing things in a different order. So, I need... Oh, what a snipe. I need to activate that objective, quit the area, and come back in. Um, otherwise the game won't load something later in this area, and I'll just be stuck. That is the reason we got Dimension Swap early. Actually, that's not the whole reason, but that helps. We've just skipped an annoying arena with cactuses that throw things at you. You've got to catch them and throw them back. It takes a while. Um, I've also picked up an armadillo to throw at that cactus. That cactus is called Chad. We don't like him. There's not a lot to say about the desert. Um, all the overground sections, every now and again there's a big vertical thing that we can't get past, so we have to go underground. Do some fighting or some platforming or something. This is the one place I have to wait for stamina. So this is where the game teaches us about coloured shields. We've already seen them in the boss fight, but the game doesn't know that. Um, basically, an enemy is invincible until you break its shield, and you've got to use the corresponding special move to break it. Um, later on, all the bosses start using them, so it's quite annoying. And they're random which shield they'll use, so there's a bit of reacting. But for the time being, everything's fixed, so... a lot easier than it is, unless I do it badly, in which case it looks about as hard as it is. Yeah, that was fun. There's a lot of trying to group all the enemies up and not using the wrong moves and managing your stamina that's a bit tricky. Right, so, this area is a trap. I have just been trapped in this room, in the world of the dead, because remember I'm not supposed to have Dimension Swap yet. Um, I'm forced to watch a cutscene, or to skip a cutscene. I have hopefully just teleported out of the room, there we go. That's not supposed to happen, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So I'm trapped in this room, I'm in the world of the dead, I'm not in this room, and I've just been turned into a chicken. So that's where this run is. Um, if I hold left, I'll eventually reappear up on the top left of area. There we go. So now we need to get back underground, but Chad is blocking us in. So... I am going to kill this dude for safety. I don't need to kill him. So we need to persuade Chad the cactus to move out of the way. And I can get killed in one more hit, so I need to be a little bit careful. Come on, chap. Come on. It can be a bit inconsistent. Also, I can be a bit inconsistent, so... Is he moved? Oh, he's moved. There we go. 
So that lets us skip a, a decent chunk of the underground. Um, the amount of time I took probably didn't save much time, if any, but you know. Also damage boost through the vines there, that's pretty neat. Uh, this is the worst arena in the game. Because I'm a chicken. And these guys keep jumping. I can't really jump attack. I just have to hope they land on me. Which they did. That was actually really nice. Just gonna take that hit. That was the wrong time to take the hit, but whatever. There we go. Okay. So now I'm gonna spend five thousand dollars on some magic dynamite. Um which I will talk about why in a minute. Because I'm also about to go and stop being a chicken. I look like a dragon, but that's because of the costume I'm wearing. I am a chicken, I promise. So this chicken, who is the devil, is going to give us Poyo power. We can turn between human and chicken, which opens up actually a surprising amount of movement. Um, I was going for a skip there, but I didn't get it. So, we can't go back to that door. Oh, no, not yet. There we go. So, we need to just STG around back into the area. The uh, skip I was going for means we don't have to do that. It's, it's nice. Right. So, I'm going down into El Infierno, or Hell. This is a bonus area. You don't actually have to ever come here. But the reason we're doing so is... Okay, we want to skip Flameface and his temple. We want to get up into the mountains to go towards the last temple of the run. Um, but when we're there, we need a couple of extra abilities that we don't have yet and are in Flameface's temple. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a movement glitch to get us up into the mountains, come back here, and then go into a bonus room and back out and that's going to give us some extra moves. Um, the bonus room removes all your abilities when you go in, and when you come out, it gives them back. And it does that based on your objective. So, I'm going to swap off up here. So what I'm doing is I'm holding jump, and I'm buffering a dodge, and I'm switching between human and chicken. It's not hard to do, but it is hard to chain them together quickly enough to get height for like the amount of time I need to do it in the run. So I shouldn't be swapping, dropping swap hops at this point, but I will later. So I've been up there, I've come back, I've set the new objective, and I can just go to this bonus room. Also, I lied. The bonus room I'm going into doesn't remove your abilities. One of them does, and this one just works the same anyway. I don't really know why. It's, it's neat. Um, I've also switched costume. There's a lot going on. Uh, this costume means that special moves don't use stamina, because uh, the mountains we're going into, we need to use a lot of special moves. Okay, so I should now have two new moves. So the first one is Goat Climb, which is that. That's how we're supposed to get up there. And the second one is this dash, which is less exciting, but we do need it. So this is probably the most technical part of the run. I'm going to dodge under a dialogue trigger there. It's not a long bit of dialogue, even if you hit it, it's something like three text boxes. I'm going to swap hop up around here. No, I'm not. Oh dear, here we go. So to do the, the reason I'm doing this is to skip an arena. Um, arenas take a long time, we don't like them. Um, I'm also going to be a chicken as much as possible. Um, I said before that rolling is faster than walking. Uh, being a chicken is faster than rolling, so wherever possible, chicken time. 
I'm supposed to have a double jump to get through this area. I've never got that. I'm not going to. Probably should have just reset. There we go. There we go. Basically, this section is why we're in this costume. There's just so many... Uh, This room is... Ah, here we go. If it goes wrong, which it just did, is basically the hardest room in the run. Because of all of these guys just... Ah, oh, no. They just snipe. A bit slower on my mobs. fine. Keep it together. There we go. So, I have just skipped the last ability in the game. I was supposed to go left and go and get that. Um, that's called Goat Fly. That lets us fly off a wall horizontally until I hit something. Um, skipping it saves about four seconds if I swap pop perfectly. So I'm probably not actually going to save time, but it's cool. So all of these sections, I'm bad. There we go. All of these sections, I'm supposed to be goat flying over a gap, maybe climb up a bit, fight something, go fly back. And instead, we're just going to hop everywhere. Too much swap popping left. Quite a long one here, but I don't need to gain any height, so it's quite easy. I can drop a hop or two and catch back up. Um, this room is supposed to be I'm flying horizontally and swapping dimensions back and forth to uh, dodge some statues. It took me forever in my first playthrough. It's now trivial. Um, and we're on our way to fighting Jaguar Javier, who is the penultimate boss fight in the game. And he's he's pretty cool. It's probably the most interesting boss fight. Casually and speedrun, I guess. Um, you know, he does random moves, he has a random shield on, he might swap dimensions. It's, it's fair. Right thing. So we want to swap back to get extra damage. There we go. So I got a, a cheeky extra roll in there. That should let me get the first hit. Even if I don't break his shield, I can, you know... So, oh, yeah, yellow shield. This guy also has two fire attacks, which are unblockable. There's one. Oh, wow. That was very good. He also crawls to the middle of the uh, arena, so you want to kill him in the middle, which I didn't. But, you know, there's enough else to think about. I got really lucky on the shield colors, though. He just wanted me to kill him. Ooh, okay. Oh, no, I didn't swap up fast enough. I was trying to dodge this dialogue. Jaguar used to be Coatman's uh, apprentice or something. And he's sad about that. There we go. Right. I have got exactly the amount of money I want, which is fantastic. I hadn't been paying attention to money. Um, one more long swap hop. It's just, I'm supposed to fly across this area. I'm not going to. But we're on our way into the last temple. Um, we are not going to do it. We're going to go in and basically SDG our way around doing it. Which won't make any sense and I won't be able to explain it, but you know, it'll happen. So I need to go in as a chicken to dodge a, a load or a save, I'm not sure. Buy something without activating the save. 
and then set up an SDG. There we go. And that has put up... Oh, no, I did it wrong. I don't know what I did. Okay. So this has put me, I think, basically one room away from the final room of the temple. And this is a really hard room. I'm probably going to die a few times. There we go. Right. It's been a while since I've done this. I'm not exactly sure what I did, but... I don't actually need to kill everything in this room. I just need to get past without taking two hits. I'm... Tell you what, let's swap costumes so I can take, like, three or four hits. I am definitely cheating now. How am I on time? Oh, that's fine, I'll still be an estimate. There's a reason that we skip this temple, and that's all of the rooms are like this, and they're horrible, and no one likes them. But there we go, that's fine. This is where I was supposed to walk. So it, uh, it didn't put me too far back, but I, I wasn't quite ready for it. Right, so final area, final boss. Um, every attack that the final boss does is a one-hit kill because of the costume I'm wearing. Um, he is always going to do the same pattern of attacks, but the dimension he's in and the shield color he's got is random. So I need to try and do some reacting. Um, it's not, you know, it's not desperately hard, but a death or two isn't unusual. So I used up all my stamina, which was poor management. There we go. So that's phase one. Phase two is sort of easier and harder at the same time. All of his attacks are like massively telegraphed. They're very easy to dodge, but he just has so much health that, you know, you might mess up. And again, everything is a one-hit kill. So I'm basically just trying to dodge cancel everything to maximize my damage. And also not get greedy and get caught in that fire. She is loving at the moment. There we go. That is, for all intents and purposes, the end of the run. But it ends on the final input, which is about 40 seconds later. So I'll, I'll full time, but it's in a little bit. But um, yeah, there is nothing to do except look at my dead love interest on a statue. Spoilers, she's dead, because I didn't get all of the mask pieces. Go and watch a 100% one if you want that. Yeah, that's the end of Guacamole. It's a cool game. Go and play it. Go and speedrun it, maybe. But at least play it. And this is where we um, disrespect the dead. And ready for time. Now. Okay. 